Jared Cohen, WLSN, and I have uh, a guy that uh, I, you're one of my idols. I mean, great. how many times have people told you that that you you know I saw you when I was younger, and and, and 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 I'm just another guy doing it. But Norm Charlton here on the 1990 World Championship team, and I first got to ask you before we go any further to tell me the story that you had an altercation, and this is one of my favorite stories, and I forget how it goes, and I think it was in a clubhouse. You went after somebody else, uh, an opposing team, and you guys met, I think, in, in the back. But you know, that's I want to hear the story from you, because I think George Vogel told me a story, but it was a little bit different a rendition. Yeah, we uh, Rob hit Tim Tuffle. Uh, it was at Shea Stadium, uh, and the benches cleared, and they got everybody separated and cleaned right. out, and then the benches cleared again. Uh, Juan Samuel hit me in the first fight, uh, and then I went after him in the second fight, and he stepped on my left hand with his spikes. <laughs> then after they threw everybody out, uh, we all went, you know, to six or however many of us got thrown out. Well, I called their locker room. Not quite sure who answered. I think it was Strawberry. And uh, I said, I want to speak with Samuel. And so we all met in the tunnel underneath the deal. Kind of their dugouts emptied into the tunnel. Our dugout emptied into the tunnel, but there were, like, a whole bunch of New York police officers that wouldn't let us get close to each other. So they finally got it all broken up and everything settled down. And were you the? Because what I hear in reading the you know the wire to wire book and that you were the bulldog of the three. You know the, the other ones might have been a little more intimidating, but you were the guy that uh, people were afraid of. Is that accurate? Well, I think I think people were afraid of all three of us on the mound. Um, you know, I think when I think when push came to shove, we were all three fighting to get to the front. I don't know, maybe I was a little quicker than them. I got to the front a little bit faster than, than they did several times. But uh, I think we were all fairly tough guys uh, off the field, you know, really nice. Open the door for a lady going in someplace, you know, waiting in line like everybody else. Uh, but on the field, it's a different deal. You know, it uh, it's about winning and it's about money and it's... Uh, you know, we were pretty tough out there. You know, one thing, and then one last question, I'll let you get around here. One thing that a lot of people talk about is the gelling of a team, the relationship between players. That 90 team had something special because I don't think in the beginning of the year people were looking at the 90 Reds as being a team that was going to do any damage. You guys had that mojo in that locker room that really I think a lot of people at the end of the year pointed to that as a reason why you guys made it as far as you did. Well, we played really good as a team. Uh, you know, if you look at our parts, we had some good players, but we played really, really good as a team. Um, talk about teams gelling. Talk about teams are great chemistry. It's amazing what winning will do. You know, you don't ever hear of a team that wins 95 games and say, oh, yeah, they had really bad chemistry. Well, winning takes care of a lot of that. As you, as you lose games, little, you know, nitpick things come out, and those become big things. Um but I think, I think one of the biggest things on that team is everybody pulled for everybody. You know, it wasn't somebody, I wasn't sitting on the bench going, man, I hope Dibs screws up today so I get a chance to get in the game. You know, I was pulling for Dibs, so, hey, I hope he throws so well he throws three innings and I can sit here and watch. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest things on the team, that everybody was dedicated to the, to the Cincinnati Reds winning that night, and nobody was worried about, did I go 0 for 4, did I go 3 for 4? We were worried about wins and losses. What are you doing now? Charter boat captain. Uh, I was the bullpen coach in 08 in Seattle. Uh, we were supposed to win our division. We lost 100 games. They cleaned house. <laughs> and uh, I decided, you know what, I've had enough. I went back to Texas, uh, Rockport, right outside of Corpus Christi, and got my captain's license and uh, run a charter boat for inshore fishing. What we did in 19, winning the world, 1990, winning the World Series, uh, sweeping Oakland. Um, you had the big red machine before that. I think people seem to forget that, you know, the Reds went to the playoffs this year. Um, you know, so they won some games. They're still winning games. They're How just... do they get over that hump, Norman? I mean, because they're they're getting to that that, but they're not getting over. How do they do that? Uh, I think health is one thing. Um, you know, I, th- I think their players they got to be healthy. Uh, they got to be healthy down the stretch, uh, and I think they have to have a ball go their way here and there. Um, they've got a good club. Um, you know, they had good leadership last year with Dusty Baker. They'll have good leadership this year with Brian Price. Um, They'll yeah, put the pieces together. If they stay healthy, um, they should be right back into the playoffs. Um, you know, after after people in Cincinnati watching the Big Red Machine and after them watching us do what we did in 90, um, they're not winning. Well, yeah, they are winning, but they're not going to that next level. They're not getting over that. They're tripping on that stone, and they're not getting to the next level. When they do that, um, I think everybody here will be happy. Norm, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anytime.